Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. Today, it is my first kayak fishing tournament, but we're doing it even bigger for this special day. We're throwing red, white, and blue lures only for Memorial Day. Let's go. All right, y'all, 5.30, we are off. for this trek that I don't have that are required. Uh, it's, we're gonna be launching kayaks at 5.30 in the morning. Line's in at six for this competition. It's on Lake Amon G. Carter. I fished it maybe once or twice before and, uh, and hoping to have my best day ever on tournament day tomorrow. I fished it a couple times in the past but hoping to have my best day ever throwing these red, white, and blue lures. It's gonna be a lot of fun. We're at Academy because I do have to grab a couple things for the kayak. I need to get a 360 light. I saw one that's battery powered. If they have it in stock, great. And if not, I just don't believe I'll be able to launch my boat until maybe half an hour past everybody else to get to the good spots since we do have to wait for first light if we do not have the light. It would be a huge disadvantage to not be able to launch as early as everybody else to get to a great spot and catch these fish, but we're gonna try and make it happen. Also, we gotta grab a whistle. Also, we gotta grab a life vest. Our boat is getting serviced, and I do not have a life vest that's in the boat. The last tournament with these folks was on Lake Whitney, and I believe it was 80 kayak anglers, y'all, so get hyped. It's gonna be a big day, and the payout was 1,400 bucks for first place, 700 for second, 450 for third, and it went on down the list until eighth or ninth place payouts. I mean, it was crazy. So stick around till the end. We're hoping to even win some cash today, but let's see if they've got what we need inside of Academy. And then we're gonna get ready for a 3 a.m. alarm to make this hour and a half drive to the lake to hopefully launch at 5.30 a.m. Let's go inside and see if they've got what we need. We found the light at Academy, so we are good to go. The kayak visibility kit powered by three double A's. And we've got our measuring board. I usually like my videos a little faster pace with the edits and all that good stuff, but I'm gonna slow things down today. And if you wanna cut straight to the fishing, go ahead and just click the timestamp right here. Or I'll have it in the uh, pinned comment, something like that, in the description for sure, if you wanna get straight to the fishing. I'm just spooling up a couple reels with some new line. I've been dealing with line twist on this reel for as long as I can remember, and it will ruin your life. You will just get bird's nest after bird's nest, and I'm gonna show you how to avoid that. If your line is going onto the spool like this, right? So it should be feeding off of the spool in the same direction, okay? But if I had the spool flipped on this screwdriver, I've just got a screwdriver sticking through a box here, and that's what's holding this line in place as I spool this reel. If it was flipped upside down and the line was coming off of the spool like this, but feeding onto the bait caster like this, you're gonna get line twist. So take that one to the bank. Also, we've got a special guest on today's video for the Memorial Day special. We have the Yee Yee Filthy Frog. I totally forgot I even had this. It's been sitting on the shelf in the office because I didn't want to use this anymore after breaking it out in this debut video and catching a five pounder on it. That was insane, but we're, we're gonna break it out again for my first ever kayak tournament. It helps to finding a big bass on Lake Amon G. Carter and also the fact that I don't have too many red baits. So this is definitely gonna get thrown at first light tomorrow. We're gonna toss the frog around. It's already 11.16. I've got my alarm set for 3 a.m. So I'm not gonna get a lot of sleep. But before I get to bed, I'm gonna show you exactly what I have rigged up to start things off. It's critical when kayak fishing that you have everything lined up. You do not wanna be re-rigging out on the water. It takes so much more effort than when you can just set everything down on the bank or on your boat deck and so you got to be ready as we tie this beauty up y'all check this out i usually leave a knot or two this is a big time frog tip on there from like the previous ties and so what'll happen is a lot of times uh you know you'll you'll get your frog and you'll start popping it and walking it. and sometimes the nose dips down especially if there's water in there and you just you know squeeze that water to get it out but if you have a couple previous knots on there, you can just shift that down a little bit. And then when you tie your next one, your line is less likely to push down there to the bottom because you got a couple knots in the way. So it actually helps keep it above water by pulling it up rather than pulling it down. And also I like to trim down the legs a little bit. It helps me start my walk with my frogs. Once you get it going, you're in good shape, but this definitely helps uh, reduce some drag and get that walk started so you can stay in the strike zone longer. So a couple frog tips real quick as we tie this up. All right. Almost midnight before we go to sleep. We're showcasing the rods reels and baits I'm gonna break everything down for you again. If you want to skip straight to the fishing, I understand check that pinned comment But here we go. We're gonna break it out. I am pumped for this red white and blue lineup first one 
reaction rod. It's got a little bit of a moderate tip. It's great for treble hook baits. I'm throwing lighter fluorocarbon line on here for this crank bait to start things off. Now this is a shallow diver, okay? Two to five feet. So I'll probably be casting this up shallow against rock, maybe along some trees. That square bill is gonna help you deflect off cover. If I find myself fishing more grass, which I don't recall on Amon G. Carter, much like docks, timber, rock, all those things that the square bill really shines at, I'm gonna to switch to a lipless crankbait. Those are gonna be perfect for the grass, right? So I've got a 200 size spool, that way I can really bomb some casts, despite the fact that this doesn't have as much line as I would like it to have on it. But we are ready to go with this rod. This might be the first bait that gets switched out for something different in the arsenal, just because of the conditions, right? So we have to rock red, white, and blue, but I may switch out to a deeper diver. I may go lipless. I might even toss a chatter bait on here. Just depends on what we find ourselves fishing. That's setup number one. By the way, we just got one tackle bag. We're not taking a ton of, well, I guess we are taking a ton of stuff. I'm gonna show you all some backups. I just got some extra plastics, but I just want one thing to carry. That's why I grabbed the big case. Next off, let's just go ahead and break out the heavy artillery. It's Memorial Day. Red is the color, and check us out. We've got the 316 Rising Sun. This is the five inch. We've got it on a weighted underbelly hook, just so I can get deeper if I want to creep the bottom, or I can swim it a little faster mid column. We can even burn it close to the surface. So much versatility with a swim bait, that's why we had to rig one up. 25 pound fluorocarbon on this because it is a larger bait. We wanna make sure we can pull these fish, a potential giant that hits this out of some thick cover. We're also using a beefy rod to help us do that. This is a St. Croix Mojo Bass. This is the 710. It's uh, the swim bait and A-rig rod, really geared for much heavier baits than this. This is kind of lightweight for this rod. Uh, the reason we got this is to throw some like two to four ounce baits, right? Some big stuff that this is really more highly qualified to uh, toss out. But regardless, we ain't gonna miss any fish with a hook set on this thing. We've got that rigged up with the Tranks reel. We've also got some DRT varial handles. Haven't talked about them in a while, but every time we showcase this stuff, I get questions. So that's that. The handles on all of our other reels are Gomexis. So if you see those lime green handles and uh, I've got some cork handles you're about to see, those are Gomexis, and again, I only bring that up because I know there's going to be questions on them. So this is the next rig in the lineup. This might be the sleeper. We've got a small 3.3 inch saucy swimmer on just that swim bait like jig head right there. Uh, this is on a reaction rod, so I I'm throwing lighter gear with this. I've got a little bit more of a softer tip. I'm going to have to play fish out on this setup right here. This is actually a BFS reel, so it is geared for those light, light baits. Throwing them with no problem at all, and that's exactly what we've got rigged up here. So let me tell you why I'm throwing it. Shad are all over in the lakes around here in Texas, and this is just a bite-sized morsel. It's tough for them to resist, and so this can get a bite in a finessey situation where they're not hitting a lot of the bigger baits, so we have to throw this thing. Next up, y'all, you saw us rigging it up. We're breaking it out. The Yee Yee Americana Filthy Frog. It's like one of a thousand. Uh, we we're fortunate enough to even get one on the drop, and we've got it on 50-pound braid. We want to not lose it, for one, but also be able to pull those fish out of the thick cover. Braid floats. It's oftentimes what's used with your top waters, except for a few exclusions. And so we've got it rigged up on a muscle rod, big beefy hook sets, and uh, yeah, the frog. I mean, there's nothing better than summertime fishing with the frog. And hopefully we can find a bite on this first thing and get started right. Taking us right into our second to last rig. We've got another muscle rod. This is a 7.5 heavy extra fast. So beefy hook sets, really feeling out those baits, dragging along the bottom or working that cover. And so we've got a black and blue jig. Remember, we can't do no green pumpkin. We can't do no natural colors. That would not fit the theme of today's video. We're up for the challenge. And I also like the fact that it's going to give me peace of mind. I, I can take my mind off of one extra thing. What should I be throwing? Should I be throwing greens? Should I not be throwing? Should I go black and blue? Let me tell you what. I hope they like black and blue on Amon G. Carter because that's all we're giving ourselves the opportunity to throw. This is going to be perfect for working the docks if we find them on it, fishing a lot of the rock that I know this lake is littered with around the banks as well as some deep trees if they want that beefier presentation over just a simple Texas rig, which I'm going to show you last. This is on 20 pound fluoro by the way. Lastly, not just because we're in Texas ladies and gentlemen, but you cannot go out fishing without a Texas rig as part of your arsenal if you want to be covering all the bases. This is a top five from just about every pro I've ever seen, every YouTuber. If you're talking about top five confidence baits, a Texas rig is probably one of them. You can simply interchange the plastic to get an entirely different look from creature baits, crawfish, worms, you name it, right? So we've got 15 pound fluorocarbon on this one if I'm not mistaken. This is our Metanium DC right here. 
I've got it on a go-to rod, and this thing I predict catches a lot of fish tomorrow, whether it's this blazing worm right here in black and blue, or we end up going to something like a bandito bug, nuke punch, things of that nature. I do have it rigged up with a heavier weight. I know there's some depth here, and if I want to almost power fish yet hit the bottom and really fish a whole lot of trees, uh, I know I'm going to have to be able to cover water quickly and with this weight it'll drop down to the bottom fast and I can just hit more and more area. I've got a whole lot of quarter ounce weights ready to go though in the wings in case I need it. Uh, otherwise we're going half ounce tomorrow morning. This is a 7 foot medium heavy fast action, the go-to rod. If you could only have one rod in your arsenal, it would be this right here. It covers just about everything in your tackle box, and I'm ready for it to put on a show tomorrow. That covers it all, but before we head to bed, I am showing you two tackle boxes that are rigged up with stuff ready to go on a moment's notice so we can uh, not lose any time on the water tomorrow. It's 6 a.m. until 3 p.m., and we want to make sure we have everything on deck that we need on a moment's notice. If they're hitting one plastic in particular, we got to have a lot of it, right? So I've got some new punches, saucy swimmers, everything waiting in the wings and here's just a couple tackle boxes we're taking. We've got a few baits in here that I think you guys are gonna like. We've got that firecracker chatter bait. I might end up throwing, this is that, we've got, fuck me. We've got some crank baits, right? The lipless we talked about. We've also got a deeper diver. I've got a white buzz bait. Oh, that's not a buzz bait. I've got a white buzz bait that I may throw out if I feel like they want a little noisier top water. And then I also have the zinger, the spinner bait. That's probably going to get thrown tomorrow. I'm sure there's going to be some wind. We do have a couple more click baits with some white and blue in there. Otherwise, we have the citizen as our alternative to the rising sun for a larger swim bait presentation. So that covers that. And lastly, this might be the box that gets used the most tomorrow. This is my quick grab and go Texas rig and flipping box right here. So I've already taken all the plastics I'm going to use tomorrow out and ready to go. I've got black and blue blazing worms on the ready. I've got new punches ready to go. I've even got some saucy swimmers and some blue baby bandito bugs in there. So we're fitting the theme. We've got four aught hooks ready to go, flipping hooks as well. I've got a bunch of quarter ounce tungsten in here. Probably just gonna keep this one on the deck of the kayak with me. So I've got extra plastics and hooks ready to go. And that's that y'all, we're going to bed. We got a few hours to sleep and then we are gonna be up and at them. I'm just tossing everything in the truck. Hour and a half drive and we'll see y'all at lines in 6 a.m. y'all 5 30 we are off we got the light we got the gear we're looking festive everyone's on their way out let's go we got about 15 minutes till first cast i might go hit the docks i might go left to the bank let me check the maps okay 5 51 a.m nine minutes till lines in if you fish this lake, you probably know this point right here. I'm going to start here and probably drift my way down. The winds are going to pick up and it's going to get crazy later. So I figured I'd hit some open water for now and then maybe rush back to some more uh, sheltered areas from the wind as the day progresses. We got everything on deck. We are ready to give this thing a whirl. I got the identifier right here for my pictures with the bass. Probably going to uh, emphasize my lines on my board a little bit more because this board is not like colored in dark, so it's tough to see how long these fish measure. It's top five by length, so see what happens, y'all. Ask y'all, six o'clock, starting off with the ye filthy frog. I think we can take this thing apart now. It is now first light. Trying to be stealthy and cast back here where it looks good. They are not in this pocket. We are going to make a move. There we go. First one. Alright, first one comes on the crankbait. Come on in here. There we go, y'all. First one, just about an hour in. Classic crankbait right off the rock. We're gonna see if we can get some more. Let's put this thing on the board. All right, y'all, with the mouth closed here, he's looking like the pinch tail. Right at 14, maybe even 14. Right at 14, so I think he's gonna go. Let's get him back in the water. See ya. Well, y'all, bad news. 
Weston, your board is not allowed in the tournament. Catch boards only. And they said it's the brand. You can use metal or plastic catch boards. I would ask around to see if anyone has a spare. And I said, if I see anyone, I'll ask, appreciate it. Cause I'm kind of in a pickle. I can't really do anything. There's like no kayakers that came out my direction. I feel like I could hunt down everybody in the group and kind of message them individually. It would probably take me an hour to even get a board. And I don't, I just don't think it's going to work. Okay. So they told me that the Yak gear board is not legal. There goes 33 bucks for that. Sheesh, man. Can't return it. Rode all over it. There goes $85 for that light that I spent the money on just to be able to launch half an hour early and get to a good spot to hopefully try and take home some money and, uh, and you know, potentially do well in this thing. We'll see by the end of the day what we end up doing because we're going to finish the day. I'm doing this for Memorial Day. We're throwing red, white, and blue. We're out here, okay? Uh, we spent money on this bad boy, probably 70 bucks in gas to get out here. Two hours of sleep, hour and a half drive here. And I'm going to log all these catches myself. Uh, at least in my camera roll and we can see how our length at the end of the day uh, stacks up to everybody else's because we know we're not we know we're not cheating you know we're putting the nose up against the board wall and I'm getting the pictures legitimately I know I'm not cheating I guess it's just not the right equipment I didn't see exactly the right one to get my buddy Pierre who's fishing this with me his board might be illegal too because we literally just signed up last minute yesterday $45 entry fee plus everything else we just talked about. It's it's a bummer. Because we weren't prepared, it's looking like this is gonna cost us maybe 200, 250 bucks when it's all said and done with the gas, with the board, with the vest, with the light, with the, oh man, entry fee. Again, I'm sorry about the lawnmower, man. We're just, we're out here having a struggle right here. It's only 8 a.m., we're two hours into this thing. We were just starting to feel good. And then we got the notice that our board is not, not, not right, so. Boo, rejected. Admin said not valid measuring device. You gotta have a K-E-T-C-H board. It could be metal or plastic, but you can't have anything else. Major upset, but we're gonna try and turn this thing around. Let's, let's hunt for a big fish, you guys. We got the whole day, so nothing else we can do. Having some luck? You don't have a spare catch board for no reason by chance, do you? It's all good. No, don't even sweat it. Where uh, are you in the lot? Are you in the lot way over there? Or are you at Selma? You'd save the day. I mean, you don't mind? Uh, well, hey, let me come meet you. I'll try and go around the spot. Thank you. Yeah, I grabbed me something last minute, and you know how that goes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm Weston, by the way. What's your name? Weston, I'm Eric. Eric, nice to meet you, man. It's just right there. Yes, sir. Um, I'll find you. Let me get. Do you want my. Do you want anything? You're good, dude. <laughs> I mean, I'll be working my way around this point, not very fast. So I got you. I'll grab it. I'll be right back. Man, I appreciate that. No way, you guys. We just lucked out so big time with that. Like, what a genuine dude. But He has a spare in the truck. Get his keys right back to him. And we might be back to fishing by like 9 o'clock, y'all. It's 8.22. Uh, just got to be thankful for that right there. Like, that just turned the day around. We might actually be able... Think about the comeback. If we come back from this thing basically getting started fishing at 9 and then catch a decent bag of five fish having to uh, utilize this new board so because that last one didn't count, that would be... Hey, I'd be happy. I'd be very happy. We're cruising across this thing at full speed, but it's only going three and a half miles an hour. We've got this thing weighed down like it's never been before. So I'm on my way to the Selma ramp, which is like so far from where I originally launched. I would consider where I originally launched like the main boat ramp. It's like the side where you're not going to see as many leisure boaters on the south end or whatever, but we're going to be back in the game. So just come on, man, in the comments, just root for us. Subscribe if you haven't already. And while we're on our way over, I guess we'll check the leaderboard. So Jeff White is in first place with 51 points. Count two. I believe that means they've got two fish, two fish, two fish, one fish for 17. Okay, okay, okay. So this is sounding right. One fish for 15, one fish for 15. Got it, okay. And I see you go with 15.25. I was wondering how to log that. I put 14 and a quarter like an, like an idiot at first and it didn't register. I should have put 14.25. So now I know that. And uh, it looks like only 12 people have logged fish. It doesn't mean that's all that's caught fish, but 12 people have logged fish so far. And then there is the rest of the 57 anglers with zero points. So we're actually looking pretty good. Much better than expected. Assuming a lot of people aren't just holding out to log their catches if that's something you can do. So uh, the most that's been caught so far is three fish. It's looking like we're still in the game. All right. Now, baby, if you'll just stay right here for one second, spot lock. Holy smokes, look at this a-hole block in the ramp. Oh wait, that's me. I appreciate you, I'm gonna cut across. I'll see you there in a bit. 
All right, y'all, got the board. Return the keys to Eric. Now we can get back to fishing. Quick snack break on the way, because we're going 3.4 miles an hour. This thing has never felt like it goes this slow. Usually it'll hit four, but not today. Anyways, I see some good rock. I see some more docks, and I see a whole nother avenue that we're about to take afterwards. So, woo, and some timber. It's game time. Got one. There we go. Oh no. Not even decent size. I don't even think he's gonna go 12. Golly. Blazing worm off the tree. 11 and a half. Well, we caught one. Different bait. Fishing a little bit differently right there, y'all. We were down on the bottom that time instead of cranking the shallow rock. That's uh that's a little bit of a sign. Hopefully there's some big ones down low. I figured when I set the hook it might have been okay, but Y'all know the feel on those little ones. They just kind of turn away. You got their weight all back against you, and that's how it goes. Let's see if there's another one on that tree. He might have just beat a bigger one to the punch. You know, sometimes those ambitious youngsters just want to beat the big ones to a meal. And maybe there's another little something-something down there. Oh, 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 I got hit on the way down. Wow. Okay, so there's something there. Look at the worm. I got hit on the fall. Oh, my. I haven't stood up that fast since, like, my last bite. There's a fish on this tree. Come on. Got a fish. No way. Wow. I just let it fall because I had cast it over that branch. And somehow we got that fish. The line is frayed. I'm going to have to retie. Oh my goodness, so like I cast it into that shade pocket since the sun is coming up now, but the line went over a branch and fell down, but I thought I saw the line coming back at me, so I just set the hook. I didn't feel that bite, I saw it. So that was a unique little deal right there. Uh, we found the small ones over here, that's for sure. Um, don't reckon he's going 14. So I'm just going to put him on the board for y'all's viewing pleasure. Oh, oh. Oh yeah, you're a solid 11, 11 and a half, aren't you? Good for you, bud. Hey, hey. Yeah, now that sun's really, really hitting. I'm aiming for the shade at all costs, or even casting at these deep trees whenever I can find those isolated trees here. Blazing Worm is now putting in work. Don't want to spend the extra 20 seconds to retie, but I probably should. Bam, extendable clips. You always want to retie if you run your fingers up and down the line after you either just catch quite a few fish and the, the teeth get to it or you uh, know you ran up against rock and trees things of that nature make sure your line is in good shape otherwise you will lose a big fish it'll just snap it the next time so keep all my trash lined up thinking that's maybe 12. Nothing special. Let's see. Oh, 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 oh. Hold on, I don't want to lose you. You guys to simmer down. Well, yeah, I think it's slow for everybody. We're four fish in though, so we're actually looking pretty good. We just really need the size. Let me go to the top here, refresh this thing, and see if anybody's caught a full bag. I'm sure some folks have got five fish by now. I mean, we're four hours into this thing. Loading the leaderboard. It's been good service until I want to do an update for you guys. Connection to server failed. Well, that's not going to help us. Wow, it's really not loading. Okay, we're going to have to do this update here shortly. Yeah, I think there's uh, 57 of us. When you get out on it, you can't beat this thing. Spot lock and all for a kayak, you can't beat it. Hey, I appreciate it. Same to you. <laughs> Getting them? Yeah. Seen that? Yeah, I'm at four, uh, all small. <laughs> you been fishing the other side or not really? All right, well, I'm gonna head that way. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah, that's 
that's fucking great. yet today that's the only one rising sun there we go come on I have to stay it's like someone in the center because these things right here y'all getting on them yeah it's been pretty slow for nothing big dude. dude nothing big yep good luck All right, y'all, five hours in, four hours left. Water on the lens. Can't help it, man, it's breezy. I came back to the side with the ramp I launched from, trying something different. I'm going for some deep trees, despite the fact I just saw a bass boat pull out an almost nine pounder off the docks, and it's much easier to fish over there. Wow, all the kayakers I see are just struggling to even get anywhere right now. Hopefully we can find some good trees and hit that spot lock and get us a few giants. All right, let's start flipping some trees. Ooh, it's deep. I mean, extremely deep. Oh my gosh, it's deep. We are about to go to some shallower trees. Y'all, the motor's officially gone. It's not found, even though it's, it is found. It's, it's gone. It will barely steer. It doesn't want to go. I'm drifting towards the bank where I started, so I think I'm just going to drop off the motor and then paddle for the rest of the four hours. That's all I can do. Coming in for a landing. Oh boy. No, we're not giving up. We just don't have any batteries. Hold on. We might be onto something here. I think I found a spot that's protected from the wind. Oh, she's a little bumpy. Oh, oh, yup, oh, there she, oh, oh boy. Woo four wheel drive, come on. Oh gosh dang. Gee. Well, let's see what we got. Oh gosh, that's a rock. I don't think I'm dragging the kayak down here. Ugh. Well, look at how nice this is in comparison to the other side of the lake. I could fish those docks. I just gotta figure out how to get the kayak down here. Running out of time, life vest is still on. Never know when you might just fall in off the bank. Okay. <sighs> GoPros never show how steep these things actually are. Remind me how bad of an idea this is at the end of the video as we try to drag this thing back up here. I'll probably remember by then anyways, but okay, see, here's this guy, see, this is what happens when you run out of battery, you just cover that thing on up, it's like it never happened, unpacking only the essentials, before we go 100% all out, it might be time for a sandwich, we deserve this. Alright, oh, that's heavy. We are here at the docks, yes. Let's cast into some shade. Wherever the wind takes me. This has been a crazy day. We'll talk more about the battery at the end, but I gotta focus on fishing right now. I have two hours, 45 minutes to try and get in the money with a catch that did not count. It's gonna be tough, but I think there's a lot of other kayakers who have already called it. They're just throwing in the towel because maybe all they have fished was that one side and it's just so terrible that they're over it and they don't even know that this exists over here so slight advantage i think top six maybe top eight make the money today so gonna make me fish a lot slower this is good feeling good now <laughs> maybe should have brought one rod Oh 
I remember this. Yeah, most people probably have twice the power or battery that I do, but I just bought one since the one that I bought is like that high dollar one. There was no way I'm gonna spend like 900 to 1,000 bucks on two batteries, but if you were to win first place, it would take care of it, but that's about the only way. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, they are acting up. can I just get an 8.9 like that bass boat had? About a half an hour with nothing. Well, everybody, I don't know what to say. It's 1.30. I've worked all that I can around this corner in these docks. Let's check the leaderboard and see where I would be though, because I got a 12.75 and a 14. So that puts me at 26.75. Let me check the leaderboard on the phone and I'll get right back with you. All right, I just checked all that. At the moment, 26.75 is tied for 16th place. And I know I'm further down than that, because I'm sure there's a handful of people who don't have connection that need to log catches or are just waiting in general. I, I would assume you can do that. But anyways, I mean, that's not a bad standing out of 57 anglers. I feel okay about that. But uh, just talked to another angler that went by. He didn't have any luck on the bank working up where I was just kind of drifting down and then decided it was getting too windy to continue. And now he's hitting the docks I was casting over a little while ago. But we just don't have any more juice. It's going to be tough to do anything. Well, y'all, I think we're done for the day. As far as fishing goes, time to call it. We're gonna go grab a beer, see the awards. First ever kayak tournament. It's been a major success. <laughs> Woo! All right, y'all, we stuck around for the awards, a little bit of the raffles, and uh, we had a great time out there. Hope y'all enjoyed this episode. We're definitely gonna be doing this again. I'm scrolling through the placements right now. I'm way down here with only the 12.75, I think that counted. Let me see what we got. Yeah, we're in 42nd place out of 57 anglers. I don't even know if all 57 made it out there. So we're pretty much at the bottom of the pack. Uh, but we did catch that second fish. It was a 14 or so if you incorporate that. If that one counted on the right board, we'd have been in 27th, but we're shooting for the top. So probably wouldn't be right to just come out and win your first tournament or place in the top three. There's all these guys that go out there on a regular basis. Uh, they know exactly what they're doing. We were fiddling around trying to find a light in the board the night before. So we are looking forward to our next few tournaments. Uh, they're hosting another one next month. We might get out there and do that with them. That's on Lake Worth. I've been kind of hunting around on some Facebook groups, just trying to find some more kayak tournaments to get in on. We definitely need to deck out the kayak with some electronics. It would have helped me if I would have known that there was some fish out deeper in certain points. Side scan would have definitely helped as we're cruising by some rocks. You know, just identify if there's even fish in some of these places. As I'm making my way to other locations, it could have been very valuable. And of course, because we didn't have graphs, I was just fishing everything that looked good to me. So, you know, if it was a shallow, those deep trees, I was trying to hit a mixture of everything, docks and various depths, any sort of grass where I could find it, I was hitting. And we really uh, covered a lot of Amon G. Carter in that tournament. If you fish the lake you've seen some of those locations you know we were all over the place but four fish on the day definitely a slow day out there on the lake for us we hope to get out and do some more of these very soon i hope you'll enjoy the memorial day special throwing nothing but red white and blue baits wish we would have caught some more on red but it did not happen so you'll have to look out for the next ones be sure to subscribe can't wait to see y'all in those next episodes let's get after it peace <laughs> it's a good one. Oh, oh, got him Oh my gosh! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are at spot number seven. There we're doubled. There we go. Oh, oh. Doubled up. Oh, oh, no. uh, <laughs> Maybe the giveaway should go to the person who gets the shark up the fastest. <laughs> Easily the biggest fish we've ever seen on this channel. <laughs>